this first tutorial on this course, I want to very quickly run through just a couple of the Reaper fundamentals before we get into any of the advanced stuff. Now, the first thing I want to cover here is how tracks work in Reaper and how you can use them in your workflow. Now, in Reaper, there are no audio, MIDI, instrument, aux, video tracks or whatever. There are just tracks, one type of track, which I know seems a bit weird at first, but trust me, it's a much easier, faster way of doing things. So applying things like effects on tracks are exactly the same as applying in an instrument on a track. There's no type or specific type of track. Now, this makes things like routing sends, doing any form of parallel processing a lot, lot easier from this type of workflow just by simplifying it. And just by simplifying it down to just this one type of track makes things a little bit quicker when you want to get things up and running though when it comes to things like busing, instruments, effects, sends, and more. So what we're going to do, this is our track control panel here on the left, and the default key command is command T for a new track. If you want, you can also right click, insert the new track, or you can insert multiple tracks. Say I want 10 tracks with each called drums, and it will also name them and number them as well. But yes, in the meantime, you can just create one type of track and it'll just be straight there. If you want to, you can also double click. Now, where this becomes so flexible is that you can, for example, put those in a folder and all of a sudden that becomes a folder track. You can take them out of the folder. You can route this track into this track here and call this one reverb and all of a sudden you have an aux track. There is no limits here. Every track can do anything. Every track can hold any type of data. And whilst it's not kind of the standard and it might seem a little bit odd at first, it's a really much easier way of working and it's a much faster way of working and it really simplifies things down so you don't have to think, okay, I've got to create a like a stereo audio track in order to load in this stem. No, none of that. You can load any type of media into any type of track, stereo, mono, multi-channel, though all of it. It's super easy and it just doesn't get in the way so you can focus on being creative and focus on making music, which is the most important thing, of course. It's also important to note here that if you right click, you can also insert a virtual instrument on a new track, which is a very interesting, useful part of it. So say I wanted Surge XT, I can just do that straight away. And with this instrument, it's asking me to add the routing tracks. I'm gonna say no, but that option is there if you need to. But you can assign shortcuts to apply certain effects and instruments on tracks, which is really useful for workflow reasons. Or you can just like right click here, insert virtual instrument on a new track, which when you're writing for electronic music or working with MIDI or synthesizers, all of that sort of thing, that comes in very handy. So this is a fundamental part of Reaper and something which you'll need to understand for later on down the line in this course. It's incredibly flexible, incredibly easy, and although it doesn't seem as intuitive as first, you can route any track to anywhere, bus it to anywhere, put it in a folder to any track, create parallel processing easily, and actually get very advanced with it as well, which we'll be doing later on in the course. But the most fundamental part now that you understand is it's one type of track only, and you can have that track with any type of data going to anywhere.